I was getting ready to go to my mother-in-law's funeral when I got a surprising call. The person on the other end told me not to come and instead go back to my parents' house in the countryside. Confused but following orders, I went back home to the rural Midwest where I grew up. Later my husband explained that his sister Jessica, who he hadn't talked to in a long time, had shown up. Jessica's first words after hearing about our mother's death were about the inheritance she'd get. I couldn't believe she was thinking about money at a time like this. I decided to stand up for my mother-in-law's memory and confront Jessica. We argued a lot, and in the end, she ended up in jail. My name is Kristen, and I'm just a regular housewife. My husband, Charles, works at a company, and we're usually pretty happy together. I know a lot of women struggle with their in-laws after getting married, but I've been lucky. I had a great relationship with my mother-in-law, Charlotte. Kristen, what do you think of this cardigan? I needed it thinking it might suit you. For me? Thank you. It's adorable, and your knitting is really impressive. I'm glad you like it. The wind is getting chilly, so be careful not to catch a cold. Absolutely. Hey, if it's all right with you, could you teach me how to knit sometime? That's how it went. Charlotte's smile was always warm and kind. She meant a lot to me. She even helped us out financially sometimes. I loved her like a second mom. But then Kristen, mom passed away in the hospital. I found out just the other day. Her death shocked me, and I couldn't eat much for a while. It's hard, but I have to accept it. Charlotte had been fighting terminal cancer for years, going through tough treatments. Even when I visited, she always greeted me with a smile, trying not to worry us. I couldn't just cry forever. I decided to remember her with a smile. So I was getting ready for her funeral, which would be at my husband's family home. Then, out of the blue, my phone rang. It was my husband's family calling. He had gone ahead to prepare for the service. Maybe he forgot something. I answered, expecting it to be him. But instead, I heard, Kristen, don't come to the funeral. Go back to your parents' house in the countryside right away. My husband's voice sounded panicked through the phone. Wait, what? You want me to go back to my parents' house? Why are you so worried? Sorry, there's a problem at the venue. I'll explain when we meet. I was confused. What problem? He seemed really flustered, which was unusual. Okay, calm down. I'll go to my parents' house as you said. Take a cab. I'll be there soon. Bye. He hung up abruptly. I had so many questions, but if Charles said to go, there had to be a good reason. So I changed my plans and headed to my parents' house feeling pressured. Kristen, what's going on? Isn't today Charlotte's funeral? Come inside first, and I'll explain. When I told them what happened, they were just as confused as I had been. But we couldn't discuss much without Charles. We waited anxiously for him. About an hour later, he rushed in. Kristen, are you okay? I'm fine, but what happened to your hand? I noticed my husband's hand was wrapped in a bandage. He touched it with a pained expression and began to explain what had happened at his parents' house. Turns out, my husband has an older sister named Jessica, who's caused trouble for the family since she was young. She's had lots of problems with the police. Despite all this, his mom, Charlotte, never gave up on Jessica. She even took responsibility for Jessica's debts, believing she'd pay them back. But Jessica broke her promise and left home. That was the last they heard from her until the day of their mother's funeral. She showed up asking about her inheritance right after Charlotte passed away. My husband was furious. How could she ask about money at a time like this? He told Jessica she was cut off from the family long ago. And to Charlotte, her real daughter was me, not Jessica. What? Kristen? Who's that woman? It's ridiculous if she can inherit and the real daughter can't. Jessica's face turned red with rage upon hearing the truth. She grabbed my husband's phone and stormed out of the house, spewing hostile words. Apparently, she bit my husband during the confrontation, causing his injury. I quickly locked the phone remotely, but it seemed she might have figured out our address and seen Kristen's face in the contacts and photos. Oh my, I can't believe this. I was stunned to hear about my husband's sister for the first time and it was shocking to know she was such a terrible person. I'm sorry for keeping this from you. It's a family issue. My husband apologized with a pained expression. We were trying to figure out what to do next, trying to comfort my distressed husband. Well, we should probably avoid our city home for a while, just to be safe, he suggested. Is our rural home address secure? Yes, I didn't save it on my phone, just in case. We decided to stay at our rural home. 
As the new day began, the sun rose and the birds sang. I'm heading to work. If anything happens, call me on my spare phone, okay. Have a good day. I waved goodbye to my husband as he drove off, forcing a smile. But inside, I was filled with worry. What if my sister-in-law showed up? What if she tried to harm me? These thoughts kept me on edge. Whenever I closed my eyes, I couldn't shake the memory of Jessica's angry face at my husband's family home. But here in our rural home, life was calm. Days passed without any trouble, and I started to feel more at ease. The worries that had haunted me were fading away, almost gone. If only the problem with my sister-in-law could just vanish. I began to feel hopeful. But then, everything changed. Hello, are Charles and Kristen here? That day, a police officer from the local station showed up at our door. Um, what's going on? I asked nervously, sensing something bad. And unfortunately, I was right. Our city home had been broken into, and the police had just been called to the scene. I quickly contacted my husband, and we hurried back together. When we got there, it was chaos. Every drawer was open, like a tornado had hit. Is anything missing? The officer asked. We checked with them inside the house. Thankfully, our important documents and valuables seemed untouched, but a few hundred dollars were gone from our dresser. Also, there have been reports of a suspicious woman hanging around the area lately, the officer added. She was yelling things like, come out and pay me back in front of your house. Charles, could that be? I trailed off, already knowing the answer. My husband nodded, confirming my suspicions. We explained the situation with Jessica to the police. The police handled the situation with the disrupted funeral, the stolen phone, and my husband's injured hand quite efficiently. It helped that we had already reported the phone incident to them. We had to give a detailed statement at the police station and didn't return to our rural home until it started to get dark. Thankfully, the burglar was caught soon after. And as we suspected, it was Jessica, my sister-in-law. The police told us that she had the audacity to stay in a hotel near our house after the burglary. They arrested her while she was casually getting a massage from room service, using the money she stole from us to pay for it all. Even though Jessica admitted to the crime, she was denying the burglary. It seemed that when family was involved, things got complicated. We were called back to the police station. We entered the room guided by the officer, and there sat Jessica, sulking in her chair. Suddenly, she spoke up indignantly, accusing my husband. Charles, how could you betray your own family like this? It's unbelievable. Jessica showed no remorse. She didn't seem to think she had done anything wrong. She probably acted the same way during the police interrogation. According to her, she didn't break into the house to steal. She claimed she came to discuss inheritance matters. But since we weren't home, she said she had no choice but to break in. Even the money she took was just for her expenses nearby, she argued. In essence, Jessica was blaming us for everything. It was such a selfish and narrow-minded way of thinking. Knowing that such a dangerous person held a grudge against me was frightening. If I had encountered her alone, who knows what could have happened. Just the thought made me shiver. Meanwhile, Charles and Jessica were in a heated argument. You've got some nerve showing up after all this time and acting like you're part of the family. Give me back my phone, Charles demanded. Fine, fine. I'll give it back. You locked it right away, Jessica conceded. I couldn't even use it properly, just like you, huh? Besides, family is family, isn't it? Both mom and I cut ties with you a long time ago. That means you have no business with her inheritance. Oh, and leaving all her money to a stranger's daughter instead of her own. Was the old hag out of her mind or what? I couldn't bear to hear such disrespectful words about Charlotte, so I found myself shouting before I even realized it. But Jessica just glared at me, clearly annoyed. You that Christian woman, right? The one who stole the inheritance that was supposed to be mine. No, I didn't steal anything. What are you talking about? I tried to defend myself, but Jessica's intense stare made me feel uneasy. I couldn't find the right words. It felt like she could see right through me, and she began to laugh, as if she had won. At that moment, the police officer intervened. Let's all calm down. It seems there's a lot to discuss, so why do we have a family discussion first? He must have decided it was a family matter. We can talk about the charges and everything else later, he said, bringing the situation under control. Later we gather for a formal discussion at my in-law's house. The living room, filled with tension, was adorned with carpets, 
and Charlotte's relatives sat around a large table. It was Jessica who spoke up first. If you give me my share of the inheritance, I'll forgive all the past conflicts. You should thank me for being so generous, Jessica said arrogantly. It wasn't surprising. She hadn't changed in over a decade, so we didn't expect her to change in just a few days. She kept insisting, give me the inheritance, drop the charges. But we had no intention of meeting her demands. We've already explained. You were disinherited, so you're not entitled to any of mom's inheritance. Well, then why don't you give me some money after you receive the inheritance? There's no way that ridiculous idea is going to happen, my husband said, clearly frustrated. I tried to calm him down before addressing Jessica, trying my best to keep a level head. Jessica, did you actually read all of Charlotte's will? There was a section about you as well. I'm only interested in the part about the inheritance. The rest is probably just her complaints against me. No, Charlotte was worried about you. She felt regretful. I explained. Well, then she should have given me the inheritance even more so. Jessica retorted with annoyance. I felt angry, but mostly just sad. She saw her own mother, Charlotte, as nothing more than a way to get money. Charlotte didn't leave you any money because she knew it wouldn't change you, I said, not waiting for her response. I won't let someone like you have any of Charlotte's money. You're telling me, you've got some nerve considering you're not even family. I don't want to hear that from someone who abandoned their own family ties, I shot back. Jessica seemed taken aback for a moment, then her eyes narrowed, glaring at me intensely. It was a frightening look but this time, I didn't look away. There's nothing more to discuss. Please leave now, I said firmly, meeting Jessica's intimidating gaze. Suddenly, Jessica lunged across the table at me, driven by rage or fear. But my husband and other family members quickly restrained her. Ten minutes later, the police arrived and escorted her out forcefully. Throughout the ordeal, Jessica continued hurling insults. But by the time she was placed in a patrol car, she seemed defeated slumping her shoulders. Later, I learned that Jessica was sent to prison. Our report of the incident was officially accepted. It turned out that Jessica had significant debt from loan sharks, which explained her obsession with Charlotte's inheritance. Regardless, she was expected to have a miserable life behind bars. She just doesn't understand unconditional love. She made her choices, and now she has to face the consequences. We reflected on the recent events in our home which was finally back to normal after a long time. As my husband lit incense in front of my mother-in-law's portrait, he remarked, I was surprised to see you stand up so bravely, Kristen. Well, that's because I read mother-in-law's will again. The truth is, I revisited my mother-in-law's will the day before I spoke with my sister-in-law. I hadn't had the chance to read it thoroughly before. The will was like a heartfelt letter from Charlotte, filled with her deep emotions. Every word touched my heart. Charlotte had always cared deeply for her family. She held no grudges and only wished for our happiness as a couple. She would have done anything for her real daughter. Holding my cardigan close, tears welled up as I thought about my mother-in-law. Seeing me upset, my husband tried to cheer me up. Kristen, can you teach me how to knit too? Of course, I'll teach you the knitting technique Charlotte used, I said, wiping away my tears with a smile. We'll cherish her memory and use her inheritance well. From that moment on, I promised myself to live a happy life, honoring Charlotte's memory.